Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to play the One Piece card game. One Piece card game is awesome. I love it. I'm having a blast playing it. I made some pirated cards because it's a pirate game and the cards aren't out yet and I want to play. So they've revealed two starter decks and I went ahead and made some proxies. So I'm going to be using those in this video today to show you guys how to play the game. And if you like this content and you want to see more, consider pushing that subscription button. It really helps me out. Thank you so much. All right, so let's get into it. In the One Piece card game, there's designated areas where things go. So your deck goes in your deck area. Your leader goes in your leader card area. Your life goes in your life area. Discarded cards go to the trash. Your Dawn deck goes in your Dawn deck area. And your cost area is where your Dawn will be placed as you're playing through the game. If you play a character card, it's placed in your character area. Turns have a sequence that goes from refresh phase to draw phase to dawn phase to main phase to end phase. We have leader cards, which start in play and stay in play, and you have one in your deck. This is a stage card. A stage card is played in the stage card area. It's played by paying its energy cost. And then during your main phase, you can resolve the activate main on your stage card, generally by tapping it sideways. We have event cards. Cost of event cards is denoted in the upper left corner. You exhaust that much Dawn in order to play that card by tapping the Dawn to activate this card and resolve the card's activate main or potentially when you're countering, which we'll get to. We also have character cards. Character cards are played by exhausting the amount of Dawn showed in the upper left hand corner. This is their power up here in the upper right hand corner. They have names, traits, and other information on the cards. And some cards have counter power. Like here on this card, it says counter plus 1000. To set the game up, your deck is placed in your deck area and your leader card is placed in your leader card area. Your Dawn deck is then placed in your Dawn area. All decks are shuffled, cut, and placed in their given areas. Once that is done, the players will decide who goes first by either rolling dice or flipping a coin or some random way of deciding who is the first player. Once that's done, both players draw five cards off the top of their deck and they choose to either keep their hand or they send their entire hand back and shuffle it and redraw five cards. This is called a mulligan and it's a full mulligan. So you cannot keep just one card from your hand and send the rest back. You have to send all cards back and redraw five. Once your hand's been drawn, you'll choose the number of life that match the number of life on your leader card, place them in your life area. The amount of life that a leader has is shown in the bottom right hand corner of the leader and the power of the leader is up on the upper right hand corner. There's also the information on what that leader can do as an activate main or whatever their skill is. Each leader has a skill. There's five different attributes of cards. In this deck I only have three that I can find and these are kind of blurry but the attribute is the upper right hand symbol in the card. The different attributes that we know of so far are strike, slash, special, and then there's also shooting and knowledge. I haven't seen any shooting and knowledge in this deck, but I believe there are some in the other decks, so hopefully we'll see more about that. Some cards are invulnerable to attacks from certain types, so it's important to know what type of card you're playing and how the types interact with each other. But we'll learn more about that as we learn more about the game. Currently, there's not too much information on that. Leader cards are placed in the leader card area at the beginning of the game. Character cards are played in the character area by exhausting the specified amount of Dawn in the upper left-hand corner. And stage cards are played as well by exhausting the specified amount of Dawn in the upper left hand corner. Once players have drawn their opening hand and decided who goes first, the first player will not draw a card and will get one Dawn in their cost area. Both players cannot attack on their first turn. The second player, however, will draw a card at the beginning of their turn and they will get two Dawn in their cost area. Once the Dawn are in their cost area, their main phase starts and they may exhaust energy to play cards either in their stage card area or character area or resolve skills on event cards that will then be placed in the trash. When a card is played, it cannot attack on the turn that it is played unless it has a skill called Rush. If the card has Rush, it can attack on the turn that it's played. An active Dawn can be assigned to character cards and leader cards to increase their power. So during my main phase, I could take three active Dawn and place them on my Luffy character card to increase his power from 6,000 to 9,000. Once this card has more than two Dawn on it, it fulfills Dawn X2, which means this character's attack cannot be blocked. So since he has more than two Dawn attached to him, when he attacks, his attack will be for 9,000 and it cannot be blocked. Some cards have a blocker skill. If a blocker is in your character area, you can redirect an attack at the blocker to change the target of the incoming attack. Some cards have Dawn minus skills. 
If a card has a Dawn minus skill, that means you can take the amount of Dawn for the Dawn minus skill and place them from your cost area back into your Dawn deck. In order to pay Dawn minus skills, the Dawn may be in rest mode and they also may be Dawn that are attached to character cards. They do not need to be active Dawn in your cost area. You may have a maximum of five cards in your character area. Current consensus is that if you want to play another character card, you could exhaust the amount of Dawn required to play the card and you may choose one of your cards to send it to the trash to play another card. We do not have a specified ruling on that yet, but as of now, that's what we understand. That may change, so make sure to check in on that when I have actual cards. These are just pirated pirate cards. Once a player's life is reduced to zero, one more damage must be dealt on their leader in order to win the game. In order to deal life damage, an attack must be dealt at a leader. If the incoming power of the attack is greater than the leader's power, and the defender does not have enough power to defend that attack, one life will get dealt from the life area into the player's hand. The Dawn that are placed on cards only give that card the power during your turn. So if I have three cards on Luffy, Luffy is gonna be 8,000 during my turn, but during my opponent's turn, he's gonna go back to 5,000. Now if I attack for 8,000, my opponent will have to counter to 9,000 in order to defend the attack. Countering can be done with cards in hand that have counter power by discarding them to counter to a higher power. So if my Luffy was being attacked for 5,000, I could counter with this counter plus 1,000 and put it in the discard in order to increase my power to 6,000. If you have an event card that allows you to pay the cost, which would be one here during your counter, you can increase the power of your card for that much power. This is guard point. If I pay one Dawn, I can increase my card's power by 3,000, which would mean if a 7,000 attack was coming at my leader and I countered to guard point, my leader would become 8,000 for that attack. Power is only added for that battle. If the incoming attack is greater than the character card's power after the battle, that character card will be placed in the trash and the attacking card does not take any counter damage. Character cards in active mode cannot be attacked. Character cards in rest mode can be attacked. Leaders can always be attacked whether they are in rest or in active mode. There are some cards that have counter plus 2000. Most cards that have counter power have counter plus 1000. If a card has counter plus 2000, it can be discarded during the counter step in order to increase the power of the card being attacked. When a player goes into their end phase, the next player's turn begins. The first thing they do is the refresh phase. So for the refresh phase, all Dawn that are attached to character or leader cards go back to the cost area. All inactive cards are switched to active mode. The turn player draws a card and two Dawn are placed from the Dawn deck into the cost area. These Dawn can now be exhausted in order to pay energy costs to play cards or they can be attached to character or leader cards to increase their offensive attacking power. The object of the game is to reduce your opponent's life to zero. Once your opponent's life is reduced to zero, if an attack is dealt on their leader and the attack cannot be countered, the game is won by the attacker. So whoever's life is gone first, plus one extra damage, they will be the loser and the person that dealt that damage on the leader with no life is the winner. Some cards have trigger. If a trigger card is dealt from your life into your hand, you can look at that card. If it says trigger, you can reveal it to your opponent and activate the trigger. Some character cards with triggers are played and some event cards with triggers are resolved and placed in the trash. If the event card has a trigger that is resolved, the trigger isn't always the same as the skill on the card, so make sure to read the trigger and see what the trigger says. Triggers are written in a yellow and black stripe along the bottom of the card. Again, these are my custom pirate cards that I made just to have some fun. Once a player reaches 10 Dawn in their cost area, their Dawn is maxed out and they won't continue to increase their Dawn throughout the game because there are only 10 Dawn in a Dawn deck. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. This is still very early on for the game. We still don't have all the information. The starter decks come out in about two weeks in Japan. So hopefully we'll have more information on gameplay. But in order to get started, you know, you can print some cards out for yourself and play, with, play around with your friends. And soon enough, we'll have our own cards to play the game. And we can buy them, go to your local gaming stores, buy some starter decks, buy some booster boxes, build some decks, and play this awesome game. I've been having a great time playing this card game. I think it's really awesome, so I hope you guys enjoy it too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. And I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip to you would be, if you're using a power toothbrush, make sure you're using it properly. You don't want to brush your teeth like a regular toothbrush. You want to kind of just hold it on the surface of your tooth and move it tooth to tooth. I recommend the Philips Sonicare Protective Clean 4700. I think it's a great brush.
and it's totally worth the investment because your teeth are basically treasure and pirates like treasure so take care of your treasure and your gems there's crystals in your teeth they're called hydroxy appetites thank you so much i'll see you guys next time え、